Good day, Israelites. My name is Brother Greg Qualls. Welcome back to Talking with Israel. Have you ever thought about your family tree? I know I have, and I can't go any further back than my great-great-grandfather. Isn't that true for most of us Israelites? We can't find our way back to our forefathers because the way is hidden. The nations of the world and time has made sure of that. If you're one of those who know who your great-great-grandfather was, whoever he was, he was probably a slave. Even if he was a free Negro, a three-fifths of a citizen, did he tell you how he got here? Most of us have heard about slavery. We don't know how many babies were taken away from mothers and husbands from their wives, how many wives were taken from their husbands and violated or sold, We don't know how many sons and daughters were sold. We do know that our labor was eaten up by the Gentiles, the white people. Even if you haven't heard about slavery, we do know about our present time, where we are still oppressed and crushed continually, as the word tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're cursed in the city and cursed in the country. Who is clamoring to live next door to us? No. They typically run away wherever we move in because we become a horror, a proverb to them. And from whom did we get a loan or a mortgage? They are the lenders and we the borrowers. Confusion and a lack of love exist among us ourselves, leading to us killing one another, usually for nothing. And take a look at the penal system and tell me that we are not the most rebuked people in America. We are serving other gods, gods who have ordained Sunday as his day of worship and have hollowed Easter with its egg giving bunnies and Christmas where there is absolutely no biblical reason for its celebration. (laughs) Yeah, for the most part, we serve some other God, some God other than the one speaking to us from the Bible. Well, we're going to let that God lead us through the Bible and find out who we are and how we got under the curse. In Genesis 10, God shows us the root of the nations that came about as Noah's sons, Ham, Japheth, and Shem, populated the earth. Those who are of European heritage are descended from Japheth. His descendants fanned out to the east and west from the probable landing site of the ark in eastern Turkey. They moved into what is now Europe, Russia, and eventually into India. The sons of Ham spread out primarily toward Africa. Cush is mentioned often in scripture and refers to Ethiopia. One notorious son of Cush, Nimrod, is listed. He moved east into the area of Babylon and Nineveh. Ham's descendants include the peoples who will eventually become Egypt and Africa. Shem's descendants are called Semites. Shem's portion was what we know as the continent of Asia. A total of 26 biblical nations obtained geographical significance from the line of Shem. Those nations include the Elamites, it's Persia, Assyrians, Chaldeans, who later became the Babylonians, Israelites, Edomites, Lydians, and Syrians. The true God was Shem's God, and Abraham would come from his line. The blessing that Noah gives Shem, and that blessing was, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and let Canaan, Ham's son, be his servant. That blessing will come to fruition with Abraham. Ultimately, the Messiah will be born of the line of Abraham. So we are Shem's children. Of the sons of Shem, Eber is named at the head of the list in verse 21 and again in verse 24 because the word Hebrew probably comes from his name. So now we move to Exodus where Moses was commanded to deliver God's people from Egyptian slavery. Moses did as he was told and brought about 600,000 men on foot aside from children and a mixed multitude of Non-Israelites also went with them. 430 years the sons of Israel lived in Egypt. Now we are at Mount Sinai where we heard from the Lord and proclaimed that all that the Lord has said we will do. 
In verses 46 through 50 of Deuteronomy 28, the Lord says that our condition shall become a sign and a wonder on you and your descendants, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and a glad heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, you shall serve your enemies, whom the Lord shall send against you in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in the lack of all things. And he will put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. The Lord will bring a nation against you from afar, from the end of the earth, whose language you shall not understand, a nation of fierce countenance who shall have no respect for the old, nor show favor to the young. In verse 63, he tells us that it shall come about that as the Lord delighted over you to prosper you and multiply you, so the Lord will delight over you to make you perish and destroy you. And you shall be torn from the land whither you are entering to possess it. And verse 68, and the Lord will bring you back to Egypt in ships. Egypt is used by God to describe the place of slavery for his people. So right there is the answer to our question. Who do we have to blame? Us. We are the answer. God foretold it. We chose it, the curses. And take a look at our condition and tell me if you know of any other people who have gone through and are currently going through this hell that is our existence. We were a God-fearing nation, ruled by a king. After King Solomon died, the United Kingdom he had inherited from his father, King David, split in two. In the half century following the death of Solomon, wars and political instability progressively weakened the northern kingdom of Israel. In the year 721 BC, after two centuries, the northern kingdom of Israel had come to an end, brought on by the Assyrian soldiers. They also brought into Israel peoples conquered elsewhere, and the Assyrian governor combined what was left of Israel with the province of Dor and annexed it to his empire. The people merged with the remaining Israelites to become the Samaritans of the New Testament, and thus the lost tribes exist. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, took Judah in 587 BC. And Judah, 400 years after David's kingship, was no more. When the Persian army defeated Babylon, King Cyrus in 538 allowed Jews to return to Yehud, as the Persian province of Judah was called, to rebuild the temple of Jerusalem in 515. New empires of Greece and Rome ruled over Judah. Judah was under Roman rule at the time of Jesus' birth. Around 284 through 305, the persecution of Christians reached the peak. So many were killed and a lot escaped. Eventually, we were brought not from, but through Africa to our captivity. But we do have the truth in Deuteronomy 32, verses 8 through 12 and 15 through 21. We can see that we are the Lord's portion. We can also see that Jeshurun, Israel, rebelled and that God has hidden his face. Romans chapter 11 verse 25 tells us that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles have come in. That's why you don't know who you are. But that hardening of the heart can be loosened up. First, by walking away from the God you serve and walking back to the God of Israel. Second, by reading the word of the Lord and disengaging from the false teachers who are your pastors. And third, by finding and joining a church that teaches the Bible only, because the Bible is our owner's manual. And if we want to live beyond this current existence, this book, that Bible, and the book of life are the books we will be judged by for eternity. Brothers and sisters, please don't forget that the God we serve while he is awesome and loving and full of grace, he is also a terrible God. He who commands good and evil 
will be a terrible God to those who fail to obey him. Chapter 4, verse 1 of Hosea says, Listen to the word of the Lord, O sons of Israel. For the Lord has a case against the inhabitants of the land because there is no faithfulness or kindness or knowledge of God in the land. There is swearing, deception, murder, stealing, and adultery. They employ violence so that bloodshed follows bloodshed. In the ninth chapter of Hosea, God says, Do not rejoice, O Israel, with exultation like the nations, for you have played the harlot, forsaking your God. In Jeremiah chapter 2, he says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, to hew for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. Let's turn back to him. Start to prayerfully read the word of God. Jesus told you that the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Well, those words are written now. I mean, they're written down now. They were written back then. Jesus spoke what the scriptures say today to us. In the New Testament, wherein he spoke, that's also written. When you do start to read the word prayerfully, you'll find out that the Passover is a celebration of Jesus' death and resurrection. You'll hopefully come to regard Easter as a hoax and their sunrise services as sun worship. You'll see the evidence that we are the Israelites, as, for example, when Abraham was in Egypt and told the Egyptians that Sarai, his wife was his sister. Egypt, which were Ham's people, and Hebrews were both black. The description of Jesus and Jesus is the only God we have ever seen or heard from. He is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. We'll talk about this in later episodes, but he is described as his skin as burnt brass. So that's why I do this, to get you to see for yourself what the truths are in this world and to find out and to keep salvation, real salvation, given by God, not the stuff that most of these Roman churches put out every Sunday. I don't go through a Bible study here. That's not my intent. My intent is to use the words of the Bible to get you interested in going back to his word to see what he really said about salvation so you can grab it and keep it. Our God knows how much I worry about him ever having to say to any of Noah's children that I never knew you. Please, don't you be the one. Next week, we're going to talk about God called us gods. But yes, he did. He called us gods. And we'll go through that in the next episode of Talking with Israel. In the meantime, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine on you and be gracious to you.